the team captains please approach center field. Good afternoon and welcome to the first home game of the season for the Holland College Hurricanes facing off here against the UNB St. John Seawolves at a very windy but sunny McAdam Field in Charlottetown. My name is Andrew Halliday and joining me in the booth this year is uh, Colin Truen, former Hurricane player who is now behind the mic. And uh, Colin, why don't you uh, update everyone on what took place in week one here between the two teams? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a rematch of last week's game that took place in St. John. And in that game, uh, Holland College came away with a 22-17 to win over the St. John Seawolves. It was a close game, honestly. Uh, there was a, a callback touchdown on St. John that, that would have gave them the lead, would have gave them most likely the win. So Holland College should feel confident, but they should not – underestimate St. John because they played a very, very close game last week. Yeah, obviously St. John coming here to Charlottetown uh, today looking for a bit of revenge and to even their record. And uh, when it came to uh, the game last week, Colin, it was kind of a battle of the defenses from what I saw. Yeah, yeah. Well, the last game really showed uh, uh, St. John's versatility. They had their quarterback go out injured in the in, during that game, and uh, they had to have an offensive lineman actually step in a quarterback who uh, looks to be starting this game. So St. John's going to have to adapt, but they've had a full week to run him through practice. So it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt to having that new quarterback in. And uh, the coin toss just taking place at uh, center field here uh, to determine possession to start this game. Uh, the flags are blowing a little bit here. It is windy. The wind has died down a little bit in the pregame. But uh, how will that impact both offenses here today, Colin? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brady Crow is going to have to take that into accommodation. It's definitely blowing across the field horizontally, and that's going to affect the receivers. That's going to affect the quarterback. Uh, I expect more running this game than in the week previous. Uh, they're going to have to adapt to this because it's going to make it a lot more difficult to get the ball on the mark. Great, so we'll just wait to see the uh, results of the coin toss here uh, this afternoon, and then we'll be right back when we get underway with the opening kickoff. Holland College won the toss and they will receive.
And Holland College has won the toss here and is elected to receive to open the game. Receiver Jared Walker back deep to, uh, to field this kickoff. And Jack Mallow, brother of former Hurricane Max Mallow, is back to receive as well. And we're underway here in Charlottetown. Looks like Mallow fields on a hop here. He's at the 20, cutting to the left side of the field, and he is oh. tackled up the middle there by number 48, it looks like. Yeah, it's a good special teams play by St. John. Jared Fawcett with the tackle. And here comes the Holland College offense led by quarterback Brady uh, Crow. And Colin, what or what will they do here uh, opening up the game to try and establish some momentum and get a couple first downs? Yeah, I think? imagine they're going to want to establish a run game early on. This is going to be a lot of run in this game given the win. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them go deep, though. they got a few weapons in this uh, receiving core they're going to want to make use of. First and 10 here on the Hurricane 16-yard line. Quarterback Crow is in the shotgun. Five wide spread across the field. And it's an option handoff. And the runner is brought down. Looks like a gain of perhaps three or four yards on the play. We'll just wait for the officials to mark it here. Yeah, it looks like Rodrigo on the carry there. He's their number one running back, and he's going to see a lot of playing time this game. Just a really safe option, eh, to open the possession here and, uh, and try and get some positive yards. Yeah, he's a sure-handed back, and he's certainly getting a lot of touches today. Looks like they marked it at six yards on the first carry, so it'll be second and four. The Hurricanes staying in the five wide receiver set. Crow drops, a uh, quick drop, and that's tossed out to the, uh, to the outside. Breaking a tackle. Oh, Tyler Majeri. This will be a first down, moving the chains for the Hurricanes there. Hauled out of bounds around the 42 yard line. Tyler Majuri especially is one of the sure hand receivers that's going to be getting a lot of targets, especially in the absence of Cole Bridges this year, their go-to receiver last year. The Hurricanes are going to be looking at some new players to really get a lot of carries and a lot of touches in receiving at the core. First down Hurricanes uh, that's marked at the 40 yard line. Option again, handed off to the running back. And the St. John defensive line swallows that up. It's a good play. That was the running back. Uh, I believe it was number one for us, uh, Rodrigo Montez de Orca again. Gain of one. Second and nine for the Hurricanes here. St. John dropping off, throws out to the outside, and that's another reception, staying inbounds and brought down by the DB. I didn't catch a number of that receiver. 21 looks like Jared Walker. Jared Walker then with the reception, and that is another first down by the looks of it for the Hurricanes. That's a nice pace they have going here, moving the chains, controlling the clock. And early, Colin, it looks like they're utilizing just a quick three-step drop to get that ball out early, eh? Yeah, and the offensive line is doing great. You know, the offensive line's got a lot of challenges, and they only have one returning offensive lineman in uh, Spencer McNamara, but so far they've done great handling the rush. First and ten Hurricanes again here at the 53-yard line. Low snap. Crow hands it off. That is Rodrigo again with the short carry brought down by the interior lineman for the Sea Wolves. Looks like number 27, Godfrey Agbovi with the tackle. And that is a, a very short gain on the play. Looks like they will mark it as a single yard, bringing up a long second and nine for the Hurricanes here close to midfield. Yeah, I imagine this is going to be a passing down for the Hurricanes. Going to want to get past these chains. Shotgun formation once again. There's the snap, drop back, and he's airing it oh, out Alistair Nicholson there with the reception, and he got it. Oh, look, a little jump there too. Nicholson with the reception on the near sideline side here, and that is another first down for the Hurricanes. Yeah, I imagine Coach Rossian is very happy with the team's performance so far in the opening quarter. And no penalties, and that's the number one thing Hurricanes need to watch out for given their history. 
Yes, Coach Young was a little bit uh, frustrated with last week's result there, calling with a number of penalties taken by the Hurricanes on both sides of the football. Yeah, it's just, it's just killer for an offensive drive, but they've been good so far. First and 10 here at the 45 of the Seawolves. It's another option handoff to Rodrigo. He cuts back, breaks the first tackle, and is brought down at the 35. That is going to be close to another first down for the Hurricanes. Oh, they might take out the sticks or they're going to mark them short. Second and in inches then. And obviously a good sign, as you said, Colin, that the running game is getting established early here in the first quarter for the Hurricanes. Yeah, once Rodrigo can get into that second level, he has a lot of vision where he can really see where the holes open up. And you saw there he cut back a few times. So really look for him to open this up. Second and in inches, Hurricanes bring four wide receivers out to the near side, and it's a handoff again up the middle of Rodrigo. Oh, oh and he's unable to break the tackle. That is a great tackle by number 23 for the Seawolves. Stadium in-house calls it four-yard gain on the play, so that is another first down for the Hurricanes as they keep moving the chains here on the opening drive of this first quarter at McAdam Field. Ball is marked at the Seawolves 32 yard line. Hurricanes bringing number oh, 21 that's sweet across. 21 Jared Walker always taking up the end. Takes a lick, but that's, that's a solid game for the Hurricanes. A big hit by the secondary of the Seawolves there on number 21 Jared Walker. Holds on to the football though, and he's knocked out of bounds. Nice little bit of uh, deception there by the uh, Hurricanes offense, calling with that sweep around to the uh, to the far side of the field. Yeah, those jet sweeps have been very effective in the past, and I imagine they're going to turn to those in the future as well. Once again, marked is uh, second and about one here by the officiating crew. The Hurricanes uh, have four wide receivers here on the near side of the field again. There's a snap and another. Option handoff up the middle. Rodrigo oh. breaks a tackle. Brought down by number 52 for the Seawolves. That's a strong play, Rodrigo, breaking that tackle. That was defensive lineman Dion Turcott with the tackle. But as you said, Rodrigo able to break the first tackle, and he moves the chains again, Colin. So some some very positive signs here early for the Hurricanes. Yeah, he surprises people. He's a he's a pretty small running back. He's probably 5'8", five, five uh, less than 170 pounds for sure. But he can really get some momentum to go on. He can break tackles. Very important to be north-south in those instances. Eh? Yeah, and he does a lot of that. First and 10 for the Hurricanes now inside the red zone. I think it's the 19-yard line here. Well, flags flying. Option. Uh, quarterback keeps it, and he's lopping it over the top, and that goes incomplete. Yeah, it looked to me like a slot back probably crossed the line early for the Hurricanes. We'll see what the officials have to say here. It is an offside on the Hurricanes. And the officials just conferring with the captains of the Seawolf defense here to see if they're going to accept the penalty or if they'll decline it. If they do uh, accept the penalty, it will push the Hurricanes back, but it gives them an extra opportunity here. And they've declined it. Prefer the second and 10. Trying to keep that major off the board here early in Charlottetown. Second and 10 for the Hurricanes from the 19 yard line. Once again, Brady Crow under center there bringing a receiver in motion across the formation. And he airs it out over the middle. Oh, and that is just off the fingertips. That He's targeting Brennan Davis there, just out of reach. And he'll probably come over here to kick the field goal here. He's doing a lot. He's playing receiver, back quarterback, kicking field goals. He's a pretty versatile player, I tell you. Davis just had that go off his fingertips as uh, quarterback Crow was trying to lead him there between the uh, uprights. And uh, as you said, it appears that he is getting set to kick this field goal attempt. It will be a 19-yard attempt for Davis. Michael Petroschuk on the hold here. And it's up. I think that's a single. Yeah. 
Yeah, it went wide, and uh, you know, that's not a big surprise with the wind going uh, left to right across the field. So that's going to go wide and put the Hurricanes up one nothing. Not the result that the Hurricanes wanted, but that was a pretty impressive drive going 70 yards downfield from their own 15-yard line. So I'm sure Ross John is happy with what their team's put out so far. Yes, the Hurricanes jump out to the early uh, one to nothing lead here on that uh, single through the back of the end zone. As the defense takes the field here and we get our first look this afternoon at the St. John Seawolves offense led by Carter Pasova there back at the pivot spot. Led by quarterback number 18, Carter Pasovad, who was hurt last week in St. John in the game. Quick snap, and it's motion to the right. It's handed off to their running back. He breaks his first tackle, and that's a big gain to start the drive for the Seawolves. Perhaps a little bit of surprise for the Hurricanes defense here to see Pasovad under center, given that number 65, Evan Arnold, did take the warm-up. Yeah, though that was a nice run by Jonathan Marino, and uh, Hurricanes got to be ready for that run. Looks like a gain of about 18 yards there. Marked first and 10 for the Seawolves from the 46-yard line. There's another handoff to the running back, and that is snuffed out in the backfield. Couldn't get a number on the defender for the Hurricanes, but that was some very good penetration, Colin, to get into that backfield early and disrupt that play. Yeah, I think that was Javier uh, Bolanos Fernandez with the tackle there. It's a very strong play. Get him in the backfield for a loss. Sets up second and 11 for the Seawolves here at their own 44-yard line. Seawolves keep two backs in the backfield along with quarterback Pasovad. There's the snap. Looking, uh, first option's not there. He's scrambling. Hurricanes have him on the run. Looking oh, for an option. It. He's looking for the sidelines, and he will get there. He's going to be short. Looks like he's about three yards short of the first down, which is likely going to be a punt scenario then. I would have to say it looked like he had his eyes on the sideline, not necessarily those yard markers there, Colin, but yeah. uh, able to get himself out safely. And as you say, he is about three yards short of the first down. And that comes back to that tackle for a loss in the backfield, stopping a first down from happening. So it's third and three, and it looks like the Seawolves are bringing the special teams on in order to kick this football away. Yeah, and defensive back Jack Mallow is back to return this pun. He's uh, certainly somebody you have to watch out for, and definitely want to have a lot of contain for him. The wind has picked up a little bit here again for this punt by the Seawolves. I think they're uh, potentially kicking with it, though, so we'll see how they do here. And he handles the snap, and that's a pretty good kick. Mallow receives it around his own 25. He's looking to get to the far side of the field. Hurricane setting up some blocks for him. He breaks a tackle, still on his feet, and he is brought down that's just a great return. past the 50-yard line for the Hurricanes. Excellent return by Mallow. About a 22-yard return there on special teams, and that really gives the Hurricanes a chance here with the field position battle, Colin, where the offense is now set up and only have about half a field to go again. That's right, man. If uh, Holland College get another 70 yards in this drive, they'll be right in the red zone. Yeah, they, uh, uh, Mallow there took it right back to the point of scrimmage there, so that's, that's a really strong return there. Hurricanes set up now first and 10 from their own 51-yard line. Crow in the shotgun again. They have four wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Emptying the backfield here. It looks like a little pressure from the Seawolves. It's over the middle. And oh, oh, in and out of the hands. That looked again like number seven, Brendan Davis, perhaps. Yeah, good defense on the play by St. John number 28, Josh LeBlanc. He's just able to disrupt it. Brendan Davis enough to make that ball go incomplete. Great job, though, early by the Hurricanes offensive line. They're offering lots of protection to Crow as he held that football for a couple extra minutes looking to complete that long pass over the middle. Still second and 10 now for the Hurricanes. Once again, the Hurricanes empty the backfield. Crow looking to the far or near sideline here. And that's arced out and just out of the reach of uh, Jared Walker there, looking for him on a post towards the sideline. And uh, 
Uh, good effort there by the Hurricanes offense, Colin, but uh, that's a quick two and out, unfortunately, and it's going to be another uh, another change of possession here as they get set to kick this football back to the Seawolves. Yeah, and there's certainly some pressure on the quarterback there, uh, which, which might have rushed Brady Crow's throw there and led to a little bit of inaccuracy, which was the difference between the catcher and completion. So St. John's putting pressure on. That's keeping Hong College on their toes for sure. The Seawolves dropping too deep to receive this punt. You have number eight, Brendan Siona, and number 34, Austin Sears back deep, or check that, sorry, 24, Colin Slay back to receive this punt. And that's a deep punt. Slay's dropping back. Well, there's a flag already on the play. He's at his 20. He breaks the first tackle. Hurricanes looking to swarm to the football, and they bring him down around the 25-yard line pending the outcome of that early flag. Looks like it's going to be holding against St. John just from the looks of where the location of the flag was. Yeah, it's holding against St. John, so it's going to move him back another 10. So early on, Holland College is doing well in the battle of uh, possession here so far in the territory. Field position being so important here in order to try and uh, tilt that field one way or another against your opponent. And as you noted, Colin, this uh, this holding penalty is going to back the Seawolves up a further 10 yards. The ball being spotted and marked at their own 15-yard line. So the pressure on the Seawolves offense here to get out from underneath the shadow of their uh, of their uprights here and try and get uh, a couple of first downs and uh, and try and relieve that field pressure. So Hurricanes missing some of their veterans from last year that really added a lot to their defensive power. Brandon Wilson went to Bishops playing for the Gators now. And we had Toriano Curtis about linebacker. So a lot of holes to fill. There's the option handoff again by the quarterback. That was once again look like number 21, Jonathan Marino. And it seems early, uh, Colin, that the uh, Seawolves offense really likes to take that uh, handoff over to the right side of their offensive line. Perhaps that's where they've got some of their uh, better blocking uh, linemen, guards and tackles on that side to try and uh, set the edge for their running back. Yeah, Marino's shown us he's a lot of good vision back there. He's made some good decisions with the ball and Zayla banging up for 18 yards there earlier on. So they're going to look to repeat that success. But I, I expect that they're going to go on a pass here to make up these seven yards so deep in their own end. Yeah, second and seven now for the Seawolves. He is looking pass, and there is the pass, and that is knocked down by the DB for the Hurricanes. It looked like the uh, Seawolves was targeting number 81. That would be wide receiver Ben Delaney. So two and out once again for the Seawolves offense, and we, uh, we are faced with another punting situation here early here this afternoon in, in Charlottetown. The Seawolves will be punting from just outside their goal line. Again, the Hurricanes drop uh, Jack Mallow back to return this punt. Kicks away. Mallow lets it drop. It's going to take a favorable roll back towards the Seawolves side. And Mallow is stood up there and brought down by number 26. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a five-yard, no-yard penalty against St. John. Running back Spencer King on the special teams for the Seawolves with the tackle. But as you mentioned, uh, probably no yards given the, uh, given the closeness of the covering team to uh, to the punt returner. Right, and a lot of the time, honestly, is the better decision to give up those five yards rather than let somebody as talented as Jack Mallow take the ball in open space. So it's, it's probably a smart decision by St. John to get in there closer. Well, Mallow also uh, showing some awareness there, letting that ball with the backspin kick it back, uh, saving uh, some yards and gaining them some positive yardage before he picked it up. So quarterback Crow back now for the Hurricanes offense. And they're going to stack in their line. There's that sweep again. jet sweep to Jarrett Walker. Far side. Slips a tackle. Walker brought down by the Seawolves secondary. He's going to be just short of the first down. There are flags on the play. Looks to be on. And as an offensive player, 
Colin. How does that pre-snap motion kind of give the offense a bit of an advantage against the defenders? It's a major advantage, especially in the Canadian game where receivers can motion towards the line. Really gives them an advantage so that they can hit the line with speed into their routes immediately with a lot of speed and momentum. And it's a lot harder for the defense to adjust to that whenever they're moving laterally and vertically across the field prior to the snap. Looks like second and two now for the Hurricanes after that rushing play on first down. Shotgun snap, curl hands off again to Rodrigo, looking to go up the middle, and he is brought down. That's going to be very close. Brought down by number 54 for the Seawolves. And as you said, it looks to be very close. It looks like they're going to mark him just short. Third and inches for the Hurricanes here on the Seawolves' 27-yard line. And Brady Crow stays in there going for it, and... With this field position, I'd say you'd have to go for it here, especially given the win. A kick's no certainty, is as we saw a, earlier. Is this a keeper, Colin? I, it is. Crow, he's definitely got it. Crow takes the quick handoff from his center, and uh, with the quick snap, he moves the pile forward. Doesn't hurt when you've got a quarterback that has a larger frame there, able to hold on to that Absolutely. football and drive those legs. He's probably got a similar build to Tom Brady. I imagine he's a lot faster, though. First and 10 for the Hurricanes then. And the ball is marked on the Seawolves 18 yard line. Sorry, check that, 20, the 22, Seawolves 22. There's another option handoff, he, nope. Oh, Brady Crow keeps it. Crow's got the ball, oh, Ooh. oh. Crow, uh, Crow had some north south momentum there and he jammed the brakes on and- uh, Did he ever. <laughs> lost his momentum and uh, I tell you what, though, Colin, the defense was taken by that option handoff that time, as were we. Oh, had me taken for a minute there. Crow with the quarterback run, and it looks like he picks up about five yards in the play. Make it second and five for the Hurricanes. And once again, they are uh, now inside the Seawolves red zone here. I think there's been a timeout. Oh, injury maybe, 54 Ben Woods, Woodcock coming off the field there. So second and five for the Hurricanes. Shotgun snap. Crow's looking. First option isn't there. Scrambling to his left. Let's look for Alistair Nicholson in the end zone. He's He's got it. No, nope. he doesn't. No nope. flags on the play. Waved incomplete as Nicholson was not able to hold on to the football on his way down. Flags thrown, and again, potentially maybe some holding on the offensive lineman for the Hurricane there, trying to give their quarterback some time. We'll see what the officials have to say. Looks like St. John's going to decline that. It is a hold against the Hurricanes, and it is declined, bringing up third down once again for the Hurricanes. And they're thinking right now whether to kick or go for it with this uh, this wind going laterally across the field. It's certainly not a sure thing. Brady Crow jogging back out. And the field goal unit does come on. Crow thought he was going to have the chance there on third down with the offense, but uh, Coach Ross Young making the decision here to go for the field goal once again. The third down and five. The Hurricanes will attempt the field goal. Hurricanes once again looking for the field goal. It is another 19-yard attempt for Brendan Davis. Yeah. Snap. That's and three. that one is good. Make it four. Four for your Holland College Hurricanes. Here in the first quarter, they have a 4 to nothing lead over the St. John Seawolves. And despite the inability, Colin, to get into the uh, end zone for the offense, still some positives to take away so far here in the first quarter for uh, the Hurricanes coaching staff and offensive coordinator Devin Sparman. Absolutely. They're moving the ball well. Have a few penalties, and they can tighten those up. But other than that, they should have a lot to be proud of so far in this first quarter. St. John offense taking the field here, getting set to get back in business. They will start from their own 35-yard line after that field goal. 
Once again, Carter Posovat under center. Posovat takes snap, quick drop, and that is a quick completion on the far side of the field. Look like number eight. Brennan Siona. Siona with the reception, and that is a five-yard reception, bringing up a manageable second and five for the Seawolves. Really important for them there, Colin, to try and get some yardage, some positive yardage here on first down. Yeah, get some completions. That's certainly something that they need to get in the groove and start getting really productive with their offense. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Let's see what they do here. There's a snap looking the near side. That's a, oh, in and out of the hands. That is incomplete. That was a good pass dropped by number 81, Ben Delaney. And as Colin said, that is the final play of the first quarter. So after one quarter of play here at McAdam Field in Charlottetown, the Holland College Hurricanes four, the UMB St. John Seawolves nothing. And St. John's punter is on. They're going to be kicking it away to Jack Mallow once again. And I guess the story so far this first quarter uh, has been the special teams, Colin. Special teams playing a role uh, in all four points for the Hurricanes mm -hmm. and also that battle of field position that we talked about earlier. Right, so important. The Seawolves will kick from their own 40-yard line here. High snap, taken down, and that is a bit of a shank off the outside of the foot. Yeah, it's going to give the Hurricanes a good field position here. They're going to mark it right at their own 54-yard line. And that results in a roughly 14-yard uh, difference here in the field position, so... Uh, not the uh, punt that the Seawolves coaching staff were looking for to open the second quarter here as the Hurricane offense takes over just on the Seawolves side of the field here at the Seawolves 54-yard line. Well, I can certainly understand their intention to want to put it out of bounds. Jack Mallow showing he's a big threat with the ball in his hand, so putting it out of bounds might not be the worst idea, but obviously you want to put it a little further upfield than that. So John showing a bit of pressure. It's coming off the outside. That's, that's, a, that's, bad another, snap. that's another low snap. Justin Chandler center has had a few of these low snaps, and uh, I think maybe just talking to each other, doing a few practice snaps on the sideline might help accommodate this, but that's been a bit of an issue so far. Well, and the Seawolves did show some pressure. And, and they they're going no huddle down. here. They're going right to the line. Second. Second and long for the Hurricanes. Here it to today. Adam Shamby. Oh, that's out of bounds. And that's, yeah, the wind going across. That's certainly to be expected. And the Hurricanes looking for a little bit of surprise there, going no huddle on second and long. As you said, the pass just beyond Shamby and out of bounds here on the near sideline. Going back to first down there, as you said, a low snap, and uh, I think that sack will probably get credited to uh, number 27, Godfrey Agbovi for the Seawolves. 65, Evan Arnold in there as well, but they showed some pressure on th this side of the uh, this side of the field against the offensive line of the Hurricanes, and uh, and it led to uh, led to a good play for the Seawolves. Yeah, I'm guessing that no huddle was around a, a matchup that they wanted to exploit there with Adam Shamby on the close side, but unfortunately went out of bounds, so they couldn't. Hurricanes kicking it away. Oh, that's short. That's going to go. That's to short, and that's touched by number 14. He picks it up on the run. It's going to be a no yards penalty. Looks like four. And he's brought him down. Five yard penalty. That was one of the up men for the Seawolves. That was one of the yeah. deep returners as Mallow uh, having a little bit of trouble with that wind as well that time with the punt. But uh, alert play by the, uh, by the Seawolves special teams to pick that ball up and, uh, and drive it forward. Officials are just marking it here and uh, I think settling on the, uh, on the flag that was thrown. Now I gotta think of I'm Tristan Hall right now when I'm in the backfield safety. I, I wanna have a chance to get it a ball. I want to see the St. John Sea Dogs or uh, Sea Wolves, sorry, uh, go deep in a throw here, but they haven't seen. We haven't seen that yet. So looks like no yards was given on that play 
moving the Sea Dog or sorry, Sea Wolves. Yeah, I'm ahead. thinking junior hockey too. Yeah, eh? you, yeah, you got me on the track now. Moving the Sea Wolves ahead here to the 51 yard line. So first and ten for the Sea Wolves from their own 51. Two backs in the backfield flanking the quarterback. Max protection. The blitz coming. Oh, he's and swallowed the up by the Hurricanes' line. defensive line. Bringing down Carter Posovad. That's Javier there with the tackle, with the sack. But that was a great Hurricanes defensive line effort. Hurricanes do show some pressure, and the Seawolves respond by keeping two backs in the backfield, but they still were not able to protect their quarterback as he's brought down for a loss of roughly six yards. Second and 15 or second and 16 here for the Seawolves from their own 46-yard line. Hurricanes again showing some pressure. They bring it again. Ball gets out, and that's a good step there. That was uh, Hurricanes DB number 20. That's Kirkland Ogler right there. One of your former teammates, I think. Yeah, came off interception last game in St. John. He's very keen, looking to make another play on the ball there. He's in the right position there. Hurricane defense stiffening there on a quick two and out, showing some pressure. And this will uh, bring the special teams onto the field yet again here early in the second quarter here at McAdam Field. The Seawolves getting set to punt this football get away once again. Hopefully a better uh, punt for, uh, for the special teams unit this time. See if they can change their field position a little bit. That's a better kick. Yeah, that's a strong kick. That's dropping Mallow back. Mallow tries to grab it around his 19. Has been a time, picks the ball up, heading up the sideline here. Oh, well, that's a bit of a face mask. Didn't see the flag, though. Yeah, oh. Mallow's still on his feet, and there's another flag thrown. That was a very good return by Hurricane returner Jack Mallow. We'll see if they catch that face mask. But from our perspective, at least, it's pretty clear. Oh, you could see his head snap back there as, as the uh, special teamer for the Seawolves tried to reach in and get a hand on him. Referee's talking about it. Telling the Hurricanes to go back in their huddle. As it stands, that looks to be a 27, 28 yard return for Mallow. And it does seem that the Hurricanes are winning this special And they're not battle. gonna call it. That's definitely a missed call by the uh, officials there, but you can't pick up everything. I'm happy to see the Hurricanes aren't reacting to that. What a fantastic return by Mallow, though. First and 10 now from the Hurricane 48-yard line. And Crow once again in the shotgun. Oh, that's a low snap. low snap. And that's an option handoff to Rodrigo, and yeah. he is stuffed in the backfield. That's something that certainly Devon Sparman's going to have to address at halftime and get Brady Crow and... Uh, Center Justin Chandler on the same page with their snaps because so far there have been a lot of issues. And again, that was God, Godfrey Agbovi in the backfield there along with uh, his uh, colleague on the defensive line for the Seawolves, number 46. That's going to be up second and 13 for the Hurricanes. So the offense for the Hurricanes here just starting to sputter a little bit here in the second quarter. Second and 13, emptying out the backfield. Six wide receiver set. And it's a screen pass to Adam Shamby on the outside. Shamby gaining some yardage before he's caught from behind and brought down. That looks to be a, a roughly a gain of uh, six, seven five or eight. Yards, six, seven. So that'll bring up third down for the Hurricanes. Unable to make uh, make any hay, if you will, with the uh, field position given to them by the special teams. And Jack Mallow brings up third and nine. And the Hurricanes will kick this football away. Once again, the Seawolves have two back deep to receive this punt. And there's the kick. And that goes to the close side. No surprise of the wind here. Taking him down around the 47-yard uh, line. That was wide receiver 
Brennan Sionen again with the uh, with the special teams uh, punt return there. Looks like Joni, Joey Boniface on the tackle. So the Seawolves offense will start this drive from their own 47-yard line. And player to watch here is certainly Mitch Logan, uh, the former linebacker who's now leading the defensive line. He's uh, one of the captains on the Hurricanes, and he's going to be looked upon to be a leader on this defense and put a lot of pressure on uh, Posavad and the, Hur or the Seawolves offense. First and 10 from the 47. There's a snap, and that's a quick toss. That's a reception. That's caught by wide receiver number seven. That's Taylor Ramjack with the reception for the Seawolves. Yeah, they've done a good job hitting these quick little hook passes. They're uh, really not holding on to that football very long, are they, Colin? No, they know uh, with this Hurricanes defensive line, they really have to get rid of the ball quickly, and they're doing a good job uh, escaping the pressure and getting that away, but that's not getting the yield of yards that they're looking for. It's about a three-yard pass completion, so they're going to need a lot more if they're going to be getting regular first downs and sustained drives. Second and seven now for the Seawolves. There's the snap. Pressure coming. Quarterback escapes it. Coming up the middle. And he is brought down. Looks like it's Javier. Made the quarterback fall there. Great step by the linebacker for the Hurricanes there. And that's going to put him around third and two. And they make the last, last second decision to uh, go for the punt. Seawolves coaching staff taking a minute to think about that one again, given the field position around midfield here and the, uh, the wind conditions. I think it was probably a, a, a moment of deliberation there to see if they wanted to hold on to that football and see if they could punch it through for the two yards on third down to get that first down. As it is, they bring their punting team back onto the field. It looks like this side that the Seawolves are punting from has the better wind advantage in the punting game, so they're going to take advantage of that. And there's going to be a timeout here. Timeout on the field taken by the Seawolves, and perhaps the coaching staff is having another rethink about whether or not to kick this football away here on third and two. Those are a long two at... Uh, yeah, Hurricanes are definitely going to want to make a stop here and get that good field position if they can possibly do it. Well, potentially, uh, Colin, this could be the first time in this first half that the Seawolves are able to kind of change the field position battle and really try and push that Hurricane defense, or sorry, the offense back and right. to start their drives from deeper within their own territory because as we've highlighted so far this afternoon, Jack Mallow and the special teams have done a great job of giving quarterback Brady Crow, great field position to start off the drives for the Hurricanes. And here comes the offense. Looks like they're going to be going for it on third down here. Oh, punter is out. It's going to be a kick to Jack Mallow once again. There's the snap, there's a flag. Look like movement early from the Hurricanes. Mallow coming over to this near sideline. Fields the punt around his 19 again. Mallow breaks nice first move. tackle. Mallow coming up the outside. There's a second flag out. thrown. Mallow's still on his feet, and he is wrapped up and stood up here by the Seawolves. That's a great effort there taking a pass center field. Mallow once again with an excellent return. Just have to await the outcome of these two penalty flags. And the first one, Colin, when I was looking down the line, it did look like there was a little bit of early movement from the outside from the Hurricanes prior to the punt, and that might result in a first down here for the Seawolves. Yeah. Yeah, they're talking to the Seawolves captain right now, so good chance they're going to be keeping the ball. Officials just conferring here at midfield, sorting out these penalty flags. Mm -hmm. 
looks like the officials have called a penalty on. And the, the offense is going out for the Hurricanes, so they're going to hang on to the ball here. Looks like it was a penalty on the Hurricane special teams. Perhaps a block in the back on that return by Jack Mallow, negating what was an excellent return once again by Mallow, who got up to midfield with that return. The football is spotted at the Hurricane 25-yard line. First and 10 for quarterback Brady Crow and the Hurricane offense. St. John accomplishing their short-term goal here, I think, with trying to push this field position back in their favor. Crow the snap, and again, another option handoff. That's a quarterback keeper rolling to the outside here. Brady tucks it, and he's going to pick up the first down there. Brady Crow the keeper. Oh, they're doing great with these uh, handoffs and these read options. They're pretty deceptive, honestly. They're keeping me guessing for a little while, at least. As Colin said, Crow with the first down. The ball is now up onto the 35-yard line. Crow with the snap, looking for his receiver. Tyler Majari, an open space. He's going to pick up eight yards. Majari seemed to lose his footing there as he tried to uh, plant to cut with the football. But again, that's a quick quick drop and hit for the slot receiver from uh, quarterback Brady Crow. And I wonder if we're going to see a return of the no huddle offense that we got a little sample of earlier. Gain of seven on that pass to Majari makes second and three. Hurricanes once again pushing close back up to midfield currently on their own 43-yard line. There's the option again. That's a handoff. Rodrigo up the middle. Rodrigo bursting. It's about a 10-yard carry for Rodrigo. Finds a hole and he just gets right through it. And as an offense, Colin, whenever your running back is able to establish himself early in the game and is picking up four or five yards even more on his carries, what does that do for you guys in the huddle? Yeah, it really gets the team going and it opens up a lot of opportunities in the passing game as well when the defense is trying to key on in that tackle box to really catch the run. So it really benefits the team all around. Hurricanes again, first and 10. There's the snap. Looking out to the outside again. Looking for Alistair Nicholson. Uh, puts it over his head. And he's a tall guy. Crow overthrowing Nicholson on the very far, far side of the field there. That'll bring up second and 10 for the Hurricanes. Yeah, you can really tell the wind is affecting this game. Brady Crow is a very accurate passer, so the wind's having a lot of trouble here with the offense. Second and 10 for the Hurricanes from the 52 here. Crow dropping back, and again, he's looking at the sideline. Just out of his reach. A little bit out of bounds. Lofting that throw into the back once again for Shamby, and they seem to like that matchup. But yeah. uh, just can't connect so far here in this first half. And that's going to bring another third down. A lot of positives take away from this Hurricanes drive, but just not able to sustain it all the way down the field, which is going to be frustrating for Devon Sperman, I'm sure. However, the coaching staff, Colin, probably has to be pleased with the way that uh, quarterback Brady Crow is sharing the football around to his receiving core and as well as the running game established by Rodrigo. Yeah, and he's uh, having a lot of leadership on the field there. They're all on the same page. No broken plays from what I've seen so far, so he's providing a lot of leadership for them. There's the punt from Davis, and that punt will come out of bounds. Just around the 40-yard line, looks like about a 25-yard gain, pushing the ball but down. He's not going to be very happy with that. Caught it a little bit with the inside of his foot there. I think he was trying to angle it, obviously, to try and limit that return. But uh, the combination of uh, where he caught that football and also with the wind means that that football is marked at the 41 for the Seawolves. First and 10 for that Seawolves offense. Looking to string a couple of first downs together here in this opening half of football. Pasavad in the center, takes the shotgun snap, and that's a handoff to 21. And that is a great chase and tackle by the offense, or sorry, check that, the defensive line of the Hurricanes. Look like number 96. Tyler Hobbs with the tackle, yeah, that's a strong play. Hobbs showing some good speed there to match that running back and, and bring him down. Yeah, one of those veterans that the Hurricanes are going to be relying on the defense for sure. Marino picking up 
what looks to be two yards on that play. Brings up second and eight for the Seawolves. Empty backfield here. Marino went off the field. Hurricanes bring pressure with the linebackers. There's up. Oh, looking for number eight there. But Javier is right there on the play. He makes the tackle before he can pull the ball in. Hurricanes linebacker Javier Bolano stepping up there and making sure that the wide receiver for the Seawolves, number eight, Brennan Siona, doesn't come up with that football. Quite the defensive battle so far, and special teams as well playing a huge role, but neither offense has really been able to get a lot of traction so far and have many sustained drives into the end zone. So with that incompletion on second down, brings up third down for the Seawolves. The punt unit is back out yet again this afternoon. Jack Mallow back deep to return this, and that's another good kick by the Seawolves. Mallow gets it at his own 30. Looking at the near sideline here, showing some speed, and he steps out of bounds right Another around. flag from behind the play. Looked like on the initial return, Mallow got past midfield and looks to be at roughly the 51-yard line of the Seawolves. As Colin said, flag down on the play. Looks like a hold against the Hurricanes. That was really unfortunate. It looks like so far there's always been a flag on at least every punt return. So with the holding call against the Hurricanes special teams, that will negate that return once again by Mallow. And that might be something that Coach Ross Young wants to address perhaps at halftime with the special teams. Yeah, he's been a... Uh Pretty detrimental to their field position, so they're definitely going to want to take some measures to correct that. Brady Crow and the Hurricane offense back out here, first and 10 from their own 40 yard line. And that's an option handoff to Rodrigo and wrapped up by the interior lineman for the Seawolves. That's Godfrey Akbovi again in the backfield. Akbovi having a big game here so far in this first half for the Seawolves defense. So he stops Rodrigo at the line, so no gain on that first down. So it remains uh, 10 yards to go for the Hurricanes, second and 10. Crow empties his backfield, there's the snap. Crossing underneath. He's got Tyler Majora in a lot of open space. Makes a nice move. He's going to get cross first down there, right up to center field. Number 13, Tyler Majari with the reception. Looked like uh, some, uh, some crossing routes there for the inside receivers and the slot receivers, trying to free up some space, Colin, and trying to shake those DBs. Yeah, he's got the wide outs going deep there, really open up the space down the middle, and that's exactly where they put the ball and gave him space to make a play. Excellent reception, and that brings a first down for the Hurricanes. First and 10 now from their own 53-yard line. Crow empties the backfield once again. And he's looking out here in the near side into the flat, and that's a reception that's caught. Can he stay in bounds? No, that's steps out. Jerry Walker on the reception looks just around the first down marker. Walker does have the reception, but not too many yards after the catch on that one as he was trying to tiptoe his way. He's got the first down sticks are moving, so he's going to be happy with that. Once again, quarterback Brady Crow spreading that football around to his receiving core. And I think that shows the depth of the team here this year, Colin, with those receivers all able to uh, to pitch in and uh, and to catch that football. Yeah, absolutely. Well, last year, the number one receiver is clear and everybody could see with Cole Bridges. But this year, it's, uh, it's the ball's really getting spread around. It's great to see. Crow takes the snap, looking over the middle again. That's received, and that's on his feet. That's an excellent reception. Number seven, Brennan, Brennan Davis. Davis. He's happy with that. He's pointing to the end zone. He knows where he wants to go. Davis, a bit of a jack of all trades here for the Hurricanes, and that's another huge reception. And that seemed to open up the middle of that field, Colin. I'm not sure what defense the Seawolves had on there, but they didn't seem to have anybody home in the middle of their uh, defense in the secondary. So that's another huge gain for the Hurricanes. Yeah, I'm sure this is what Devon Sperman is looking for. Their offense is clicking, getting a lot of comfortable completions here. 
And there's a hurt Seawolf on the field there. It's number 28. Josh LeBlanc just taking a knee there in the center of the formation. And uh, the training staff just walking off with him there. So Hurricanes offense back in business with this drive here. They are down right around the red zone once again for the Seawolves. Hurricanes look to be on the Seawolf 22-yard line. Hurricanes come out again in the shotgun formation. Rodrigo in the backfield beside Crow. Perhaps another option. You're right. Crow holds the football. Crow gets the outside, breaks a tackle. Crow's looking to make it himself. Oh, and he fumbles oh. the football. That football is down on the field. Looks like it might have been recovered by one of the linemen for the Hurricanes on the far side of the football field. We'll just have to wait to see what the officials have to say here. Yeah, Hurricanes are going to recover that. That's a, that's a risk you really don't want to have to run in there in the red zone. I think Brady Crow's probably going to have to put two hands on the ball next time when he's in contact like that. Yeah, Crow a little bit free with that football as he had eyes on the end zone, but uh, alert play by the Seawolves defense to knock that ball out. But luckily for the Hurricanes, it was recovered by one of their linemen. So Crow picks up seven on that play. It's second and three now inside the red zone for the Hurricanes looking to put a major on the board here before halftime. A little confusion in the backfield right now. Alistair Nicholson running from one end to the other. Crow takes shotgun snap. There's the option handoff. Rodrigo, and once again, that line collapses down. That's a good stop by number 65, Evan Arnold, for the Seawolves. Yeah, that's a good job stopping that rush by the St. John defensive line. Hurricanes looking to try and get a second down there on the ground after having success through the air. However, the defensive line of the Seawolves quick to respond. And Brady Crow staying in there for the third down attempt. Looks like no gain on second down. So we have third and three here for the Hurricanes inside the red zone of the Seawolves. Ball's at the 14-yard line. Crow takes the snap. Option again. He hands that off. Rodrigo coming to the near side here. Breaks a tackle. And he's down just shy of that goal line, I think. Looks like a first down, though, for the Hurricanes. And we have a Seawolf defender just on the ground there at the end of that play. Looks to be in a little bit of pain as the training staff comes out. Both teams taking a bit of water on here as the training staff for the Seawolves takes a look at their uh, their defensive uh, player there who's uh, seemed to uh, be a bit shaken up. It is a first down, though, for the Hurricanes. Uh, ball is marked at the seven-yard line, so first and goal. Yeah, he's still down. I'm, uh, I was taking his helmet off now. I haven't been able to get a number yet. Just look at the tail end of that running play, like you might have got rolled up a little bit or something like that. Hopefully nothing too serious here. So with that first down, Colin, obviously the Hurricanes looking to reestablish the run game with Rodrigo after uh, not uh, not being successful on second down earlier in the drive, but then they go back once again to the well. Yeah, it just goes to show that the passing game can really open up opportunities for the running back to curve up the defense. And Rodrigo's going to be very happy with that seven-yard run. He'd like to get in the end zone, but five yards to go, it's a good chance he's going to get the ball again. Well, and being now at the seven-yard line here on first and goal, obviously as an offensive player yourself, you have a few more options because you're not right on top of the goal line, right? So you have yeah. a little more room for your plays to develop. So what do you think that uh, offensive coordinator Devin Sparman might be looking at here on first down? Well, unfortunately, one of the uh, one of the shames about this field, actually the EPI alumni field, is that we actually have 10-yard end zones, unlike uh, the other fields in the league in the Canadian game. We have 20-yard end zones. So that kind of limits some of the options you have offensively in the passing game in the red zone. So there's a good chance they're going to have to go with the running game to get those extra five yards that they need. 
Well, and I guess that would also mean that uh, having a little more room and not being on top of the goal line is actually quite important here at McAdam Field. Mm -hmm. As you said, given the, the length of the end zones, therefore you're buying yourself a few more yards to actually have, a, have the running route for the receiver kind of mm -hmm. play itself out and try and get some space opened up. Yeah, it's a unique field here. The only grass field in the league and the only field, I believe, with a 10-yard end zone. So that's something that the Hurricanes, uh, whether they're their advantage or disadvantage, they have to adapt to. And applause around the stadium here as the Seawolf, who was shaken up on that play, is up on his feet now, uh, getting a bit of a hand from the training staff and his teammates to get back to the sideline. It looks to be a lower body injury the way he, he's limping there. So hopefully we'll see him in the second half, but uh, I'm not sure given the state of him right now. So we're just about to get back to football here. Uh, just as a reminder, we are in the second quarter here at McAdam Field in Charlottetown. And the score is 4-0 for the Holland College Hurricanes via a single through the back of the end zone on a missed field goal attempt by kicker Brendan Davis early in the first quarter. And then Davis followed it up with a 19-yard field goal uh, to get us to the four points here. So back underway. Hurricanes take the snap. There's the option handoff to Rodrigo again. Looks like he's playing. In. That's a touchdown. It's a great effort by the Hurricanes offensive line to make a nice hole for him. There's a flag after the play. It's a little – I'm not sure what that was for, but uh, Hurricanes are putting up six there regardless. Rodrigo with the seven-yard touchdown on the ground, and he's had a pretty good first half. Very productive. The field goal unit comes on. Brendan Davis back on the field now, looking to kick that extra point for the Hurricanes after the rushing touchdown by Rodrigo. Looks like there's going to be a penalty applied against the Seawolves on the kickoff. Let's see head official Rob St. Pierre pointing in the direction of the Seawolves. There's the point after, and it's good. So your Hurricanes put up a major on the board, bringing our score to 11 nothing for the Holland College Hurricanes. So the Seawolves are going to get the ball back here. They're going to get the ball back at halftime as well in the second half. So they have a chance here to draw closer to the Hurricanes. Up 11 here. So with the wind here, the Seawolves are deciding to receive the kickoff rather than taking the ball at the 35. But as, uh, as you said, Colin, penalty assessed on this kickoff. So it looks like Brendan Davis will be punting this football, or sorry, excuse me, kicking this football away from midfield. Yeah, I'm sure if it wasn't for this win, Brendan would have no problem putting this right through the end zone. So Seawolves getting set to receive the football after giving up that touchdown. Once again, they've got two guys deep to receive this kickoff. Davis arcs it up here to the near side of the field, and that's taken cleanly. Brennan Siona. Oh, he's making a nice few cuts there. Siona bursting through and brought down by the second level of Hurricanes there on that uh, kickoff coverage. Looks like Siona just got past his own 30-yard line. So. Looks like a holding against St. John's. So that's going to move them further back. 
I was just going to say that Siona finally giving them some good field position, but unfortunately a, a pla another flag here this afternoon for the Seawolves. And special teams once again playing a huge part in this field position battle so yeah. far here this afternoon. Yeah, it's been to both teams. Both have been unfortunately unable to stop from having a few of these holding penalties on their returns. So it's hampering both their production on the return game. So with that penalty flag, the Seawolves offense will start from their own 19-yard line here just before halftime, looking to get some points on the board. Pasovat in the shotgun, five wide receiver set. Emptying. There looking, that's in the slot and that's a reception by Sion. A nice tackle there by Denzel Gendron Muscadet. Just going to make that a short loss and no yards after the catch. Short gain. Siona with the reception. As uh, as alluded to by Colin, limited to yards after the catch, but he does have a completion, and it looks like six yards on the play. So it'll be second and four, or maybe a second and five here for the Seawolves from their own 25-yard line. Pasovat surveying the defense here, takes the snap, looking this near side, and that's a completion. That's a good catch. It's going to be a flag as well. Caught by Riley Ring Deneen there on this near side of the football, or sorry, of this field. But and that forward progress should bring him fairly close to the first down. But that, oh, and it's going to be a face mask, it looks like, against the Hurricanes. So regardless, that's going to move the chains. Ring Deneen with the reception there. However, uh, as you said, he was wrapped up very quickly by the secondary of the Hurricanes. So awaiting the outcome of this penalty, it's going to tack on 15 yards here. So first down for the Seawolves. And this might be the first time this half, Colin, that their offense is actually getting close to midfield here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Steve Lettner, the defensive coordinator of the Hurricanes, is not going to be very pleased with these unnecessary penalties. And he's going to be keeping track of these for practice on Tuesday for sure. Seawolves trying to build some positive momentum here going into halftime. Possive adding the shotgun once again. Marino beside him. Takes the snap, looking, doesn't see anything. Scrambling around, and he's wrapped up and taken down for a loss. There's a sack. Looks like Bradley Lawton on the play. And he, yeah, at that point, he's really got to know to throw the ball away. Can't be dancing around that lawn in the backfield. But. Number 11 for the Hurricanes, Dennis Robler also in on the stop there. And that was probably a case perhaps of Pasovad just, just trying too hard here to try and make something happen, holding on to that football. And that's a huge loss of yardage for the Seawolves offense. It's going to push them back to their own 35-yard line. So second and long here. Possified with the snap. Looking far side. Oh, that's oh. tipped. Oh, and that was almost intercepted. Oh, the air there with the tip. Linebacker Bolanos for the Hurricanes getting his hand on that football. He's been all over the field so far. He's really been making a lot of contributions in the backfield and tackling and getting hands on balls well last week in uh, St. John Bolanos did have that interception that he returned for a touchdown so reading Pasovad and, uh, and getting a hand on that football another two and out now for the Seawolves offense means that the Hurricanes have a chance to add to their lead here just prior to halftime Seawolves will be kicking this football away on third and long And the kick's away. Mallow drops that football, picks it up around his own 36. He's going to the far side of the field. Has a couple blocks yeah, set up in a, front of him. He's got blockers from now. He's There's looking. a block. Mallow it's the down to, to the beat. 40. Mallow cuts inside, and finally he's swarmed and tackled by the Seawolves as they rallied to that football. But Mallow once again with a huge return. But once again, there are penalty flags down on the field. If I'm St. John at this point, I've got to be thinking of ways to counter 
Mallow with the ball on those returns. We're thinking of putting it out of bounds or putting it in a position where our, uh, their gunners can get on the ball because he's been having great returns so far. And the officials talking to the Hurricanes here. So this penalty might be against the Seawolves which is not good news for their defense after a massive return by Jack yeah, Mallow. That's a great field position for the Hurricanes right here. That football is spotted down on the, looks to be about the 12 yard line of the Seawolves. So that is a huge play on special teams once again. Special teams really being the story of the afternoon so far, Colin. Yeah, being a big help for Brady Crow's offense here. Oh, there's Timeout, I think. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a timeout on the field here. Hurricanes taking a timeout here, preserving the clock and uh, making sure that they have their play set up. Yeah, they're going to want another major before halftime. Getting late here in the second quarter here in Charlottetown at McAdam Field. Your Holland College Hurricanes leading the St. John Seawolves 11 to nothing and looking to add more here just before half. Quarterback Looks Brady like the, Crow. Uh, I think it's a field goal unit coming on. Must be a uh, – we can't see the clock very well from here, but it must be very low in the time count now if they're going for the field goal at this point. So check that. Crow and the offense remain on the sideline. Brennan Davis in to kick this field goal. And that's through. It's going to be 14-0 now for the Hurricanes. And Davis connects. Connecting on that 12-yard field goal. That brings it to 14 to nothing for the Hurricanes. That'll be your halftime now. So halftime here at McAdam Field in Charlottetown, week two of the Atlantic Football League, and the Holland College Hurricanes have a 14 to nothing lead over the St. John Seawolves, and we'll be back for your second half. Check that, folks. Apparently, we're not quite at halftime quite yet. It did look like that was the end of the first half. Seawolves getting one more possession here in this first half from their own 35-yard line. Pasovat takes the snap. And there's the uh, halftime whistle. Incomplete, looking down this near sideline for number four, Seb Brown. So it looks like the officials... Added a bit of time on the clock there, allowing one more play before first half. So now we are at halftime, and it is still the Holland College Hurricanes 14, the St. John Seawolves nothing. We will see you in the second half. <laughs> 